morning, good afternoon, good evening. Let us pray. Deliver me from the hands of evil spirits who have sway over the thoughts of men's hearts. And let them not lead me astray from thee, my God. Establish thou me, my seed, forever, that we may go not astray henceforth and forevermore. Jubilees chapter 12, verse 20. Yes, most holy Sanini Nainini, we thank you, even Tata and Zombie. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for the sunshine, the sunlight. Thank you for the warmth. Thank you for uh, even those who are going through in the cold. Well, where our choices are is how we suffer in many ways. And we thank you, most holy Sanini Nainini, even Tata and Zombie, the great I am. We thank you for all, everything. We thank you for this day of rest. We thank you for the day that you've given us that we might be pleasing in your sight. Yes, and we thank you. And we give you the glory and the praise. Yes, 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 even how we can talk to you throughout the day, night, 24-7, if we would just think on you. Because you said, I will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Yes, and we thank you for all things. Yes, we thank you for subduing our enemies. We thank you that there are no more. According to your word, it is. You call those things that are not as though they are, so we call the same things according to your word. That these things, these enemies, they're digressing, they're regressing, they're, they're leaving. Yes, they're diminishing until we come to that full maturity of that spiritual man that you want us to be. Yes, and we thank you for all things. Yes, 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 good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Yes, and we thank God for you. Those of you who have been with us from the beginning, even from day one while we were in the book of Revelation, and those of you who have moseyed in, you're going back and forth inside the archives or whatever, uh, catching up and getting an insight on those things, and we thank God for those of you who have just joined, and also those of you that are about to join. We thank and praise the Most High, even Tata and Zambes and Nini Nini, the great I am in whatever language you put the Most High in. Yes. And we're in the chapter 18 of the Book of Jubilees. Yes, there's so many things going on this day, so many things that we are experiencing in this day and that we see not only on social media but in the news and all around us how that those who do not have the spirit of the most high upon them and they don't have the the angels of presence around them these things are something else reason I say that is because there is only one God. There's no one that shares God's throne. There's no one that, when God says throne, he means, when he says a throne, he either means glory or authority. Some type of authority that he's given that entity or that person. There is no one person. Everyone has his job that he does, and each one in the kingdom, even in the realm that the Most High is in, they do, they do their task well except for those who have decided they wanted to depart from the most high so the most high causes them to be used to try men as we've read before even in the 17th chapter how that abram was tried steadily tried he was steadily tried he was tried from day one from the day that he was tried to smash the idols of his father then he began to run because his life was in jeopardy. He left with his children. He, he left with his wife. Now he was tried with the kings that he passed through their lands to steal his beautiful wife and uh, just devastate everything about him. Then he got into the point where even his own nephew was in trouble. But the Most High delivered them all. God showed how he can just strengthen his servants and his armies. To fight against a foe. We don't know the size of that foe, but we know there were more than one king, so there had to be more than what he was. But like I said before, what God is with you is better than millions against you. They can have nukes, bombs, whatever. 
But you have to stand either way, knowing that if I die, I'm in the arms of the Most High. If I live, I'm blessed to declare his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. You cannot be afraid. If you are afraid, accept that fear and make, it, make you go forth. Because even a person that first swims for the first time looks at everybody else and says that, hey, if they can do it, I can. They can jump in that water. You're scared. You feel like, ah. Oh. They say, come on in. It's fine. Maybe it's not so fine. Maybe they're dying. Maybe in reality they're dying. But the fact is, you say, in the most high, in God, as I have been keeping his commandments, statutes, and law, in God, I know that if I should die, yes, that process is hard. It's the process of even jumping in a cold pool is hard until you get in and your body gets used to it. By whatever means, by whatever way, it changes a metamorphosis where your body accepts all this stuff. The same thing with when we put ourselves in harm's way. When we begin to do what God say do, and the naysayers come against us, it don't take all that. The naysayers come against you. No, that's not what it is. Because broad is the road, and many are on it right now. Many are on that road to where they, the Saturday Sabbath. Many are on that road to Sunday Sabbath. Many are on that road to not even being circumcised and thinking that uh, on that road that our own people are being baptized in water when that was never instituted by God. Many are on that road and so many things that the New Testament or what they call the New Testament, which is a uh, corruption of the letters written by different people. They're on that road eating things God did. How can you change when God says, if you call yourself of Israel, if you call yourself of the people of God, how can you sit up there and say, well, when he let the thing down that God said, oh, no more pork. Was that there or did they institute that in that? I can put, I can take anything and put something in there, but you know by their doing. The law is unchangeable. The law is a measure of the love that you have, not only for God, but for your fellow man. It's a measure, and also it's a guide. It's instruction for righteous living. And with that, let's go ahead on. Verse 18, I mean, chapter 18 of the book of Jubilees. Jubilees, chapter 18, yes. And God said unto him, Abram, Abram, he said, Behold, here am I. And he said, Take thy beloved son whom thou lovest. Now, see, this is because of the, the demon, the demon captain that came to me. Yeah, let's try this. Now, see, this you call him Satan, but he has a name here. Satan is just the name of the grouping of devils, the Satans. Now, the Muslims got that right. They know that they are plural. There's no one Satan. And the Bible goes back and forth. Man. Even the books, these books, because they're written by who? Those who've been swayed by Christianity, whether it's in orthodoxy or unorthodoxy. They've been swayed, and so they, 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 they do this thing. Then they make mistakes. They didn't cover their tracks. And we find out the truth. Yes. Okay. He said, take thy beloved son who thy love of even Asaka, even Isaac, unto the high country and offer him on one of the mountains, which I will point out unto thee. And he rose early in the morning and saddled his ass and took his two young men with him. And Asaka took his, and Isaac took his son, or Asaka took his son, and Clave and Isaac his son, <laughs> I'm getting this kind of confused here, and Clave wood of the burnt, Offering. In other words, they took logs and they made them out of slits and they throwed them on their back. You know how you would make a little sleeve or a little backpack and they, they put them on the back and they go on up the go on up the hill or the mountain. And he went to the place on the third day, not the third day that you say that uh, uh, your Esus died and rose on he died on Friday and rose on Sunday. <laughs> but anyway, and he saw a place far off and he came to a well of water, 
And he said to his young men, abide ye here. You know, you can't go this far, no further than this. This is holy stuff. Now, and I and the lad will go yonder. And when we have worshipped, we shall come again to you. And he took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Asaka, his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. And they both went of them together to that place. In other words, a fire, a torch, or whatever he had that would keep the fire going until he got up the hill and they could set the wood in order for the sacrifice of his son. Now, he did this because he was obedient. He believed God. Abraham believed God. Abram believed God. Now, what happened? Verse 6, And Asaka said unto his father, Father, he said, Here am I, my son. And he said unto him, Behold, the fire and the knife and the wood, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? Father, he said God will provide for himself a sheep for a burnt offering. That is not your Isis. <laughs> that is not that's just something he just said. That's not even closely, remotely, even similar to some of you paganistic people. This is evil on God's behalf if he did allow this to go through. Now, God will provide for himself a sheep for a burnt offering. And he drew near. He's talking about him. He didn't know God was going to say stop or an angel was going to come and say stop. He didn't know that. We have to realize these people are human. And he drew near to the place on the mount of God. And he built an altar and, his pla and the, he placed the wood on the altar. Now some of you, you read these the 33 books. But the fact is that's incomplete. That is very incomplete. This giving you a complete story of what happened in heaven as it is on earth. <laughs> yes, it does. It gives you a complete thought of the most high. This is why we should read these books. And he read and he built an altar and he placed the wood on the altar and bound Isaac his son. Yes, God provided. Here you are, son. <laughs> And bound Isaac his son and, play, and, and placed him on the wood, which he was upon the altar, and stretched forth his hand to take the knife and slay. Ah, oh, yes, in the name. He didn't say the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He didn't even say no name. He just, you know, he just in obedience. That was his heart, the obedient heart he had. He didn't have to say nothing. He knew what he was commanded. And I stood before him. This is the angel presence talking to Moses, the same angel. He said, and I stood before him, the prince, before the prince of Mastema, and the I am said, bid him not to lay his hand on the lad, nor to do anything to him, for I have shown that he feareth the most high. Ah, yes. Sometimes God will tell you to do things that you don't even know to do, that you wouldn't dare to do, places to go where you wouldn't dare to go. Yes, God will tell you to do that people to say something to that you never said to. I know this firsthand. He will do it. And out of it will come fruit. Fruit. Yes, fruit of repentance. Fruit of people giving their lives to Christ. Fruit of those who've seen and said this person fears nobody but God. Now, fruit. But you're too afraid of dying. You're afraid of death. Many of you are. You only, seek, you only seek that favor that comes from people and not from God. You, every man and woman must examine themselves. Who do I seek favor from in, in my living and the way I dress and what I do? What do I want favor from? You lie. You, you get in front of the cameras, in front of people. Oh, I just like to smell good. I just like to look nice. But what is it? God sees the secrets of your heart anyway. Let us continue. And I stood before him before the prince. In verse 10, we're in verse 10, okay. He stood before the prince and said, oh, he loved God. We know that without a shadow of a doubt. Look. See, this is the same one that went before when the sons of God appeared in the book of Job. He said Satan, but it wasn't. It was this guy. Yeah, you say he's perfect. <laughs> the accuser of the brethren, all of them are. 
And I called to him from heaven and said unto him, this is the pre- this wasn't God, this was who? The, pre- the angel of presence that's in the presence of the Most High. God is holy. You don't know how holy God is. Someone that invents everything you see, smell, eat. You travel. You make things out of it. This entity is holy. Clean. He demands what he wants. Even the angels fall down before him and praise him every day because they know the power that he possesses. Even your same Isis that you call him, he bows down each day worshiping him. Every day. <sighs> oh, we have a lot to learn. And he was terrified and said, Behold, here am I. And I said to him, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou any harm, anything to him, for now I have shown that thou fearest the I am. And has not withheld thy son, thy firstborn son, from me. And the prince of Mestima was put to shame. Can you put a Satan to shame in your life? The way you dress. The way you deal with mankind. I'm not talking about no sissy fire. Somebody slap you, slap them back. Somebody come at you with something, you come back at them. God tells you to do this in the law. Fair is fair. But the devil, this Mastema and his cohorts, they do not want to be fair. They come in these people. They speak to their minds. Then they get into the legal system. This is how they know. They get into the legal system. Oh, if he would have done this. Oh, you're going to just let me say me? Should he let him kill me or let him hurt me? Defense is, is, is not vengeance. To put one down before they put you down is not vengeance. It's defense. Now, even in this game, because they're not going to come back. But anyway. And the prince of Mastema was put to shame. How do we put to shame? By obedience to the Most High. He tells us what to do. Yes, that's our love. Our love for ourself. Our love for our loved ones. Because if you love your loved ones, you wouldn't allow yourself to be killed. If you love yourself, you wouldn't allow yourself to be put to death by someone who's directed by even the Satans. No, fair is fair. They're going to take your life. You better, you better begin to put them down or either deter them some kind of way. And behold, a single ram caught by his horns. See, this is what the, the, the 33 books did not tell you. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it for a burnt offering. In the stead of his son. And Abraham called that place. The I am have seen. So that it is said in the mount. The I am have seen. That is Mount Zion. He was on Mount Zion. When he sacrificed. When he was about to sacrifice. Asaka. Some say that's Mount Kenya. Some say that's way in South Africa. I mean I can take either one of the places. And prove to you that this is Israel. Or this is. Jerusalem, even up there and where you got it now, because of the locations of the mountains and hills and all this stuff. And you have to realize in 1948, before that, they saw these places. They knew that they could, they, they cartographized every one of them and knew they could justify why it's Jerusalem or whatever. But anyway, in Mount Zion, he was going to Sacrifice his only son. That's why my science is so holy. Now, and the I am called Abram by his name the sec- a second time from heaven, and he calls us to appear to speak to him in the name of the I am. Now, God gives the angels a presence because they're so holy to appear because what? Of Abram's heart. That made Abram holy because he obeyed. That is righteousness. And he said, by myself have I sworn, saith the I am, because thou hast done this thing, and thou hast not withheld thy son, thy beloved son, from me. He didn't say that only son. He said, thy beloved son. Some of you still want to contribute that to Esau. Don't you know that's because of the whore church? They put that stuff down. They have manipulated the scripture. In blessing, I shall bless thee. He said, because you are, I'm just so glad. Oh, I'm so glad. 
And multiplying, I shall multiply thy seed. You proved yourself to me. Prove yourself to God. As the stars of heaven, as the sand which is on the seashore, and at thy seed will inherit the cities of its enemies. In verse 16, he says, and thy seed will all nations of the earth be blessed. If, you, if your nation wants to be blessed, white, black, or whatever you are, you start blessing Abram. But no, you curse him. Because God had given you a, a space, but your space is over with. Now the seed of those of Deuteronomy chapter 28 are enjoying that, but now it's coming back at you. <laughs> look at the calamities. Look at all these things. They're getting higher and higher and higher and higher to the point you are just plain old wiped out. Even your own president knew that. Because thou hast obeyed my voice, and I have shown to all that thou art faithful unto me in all that I have said unto thee. Go in peace. I'm going to finish this chapter. Go in peace. And Abraham went to his young men, and they arose and went together to Beersheba. They went back to Beersheba, where Hagar was. Well, she went back toward what? Egypt, according to whatever map that, that, that is we see, the renamed map or whatever. And Abraham dwelt by the well of Oath. And he celebrated this festival every year, seven days with joy, and he called it the festival of the I Am, according to the seven days during which he went and returned in peace. And according as it had been ordained and written on the heavenly tables regarding Israel and its seed that they should observe this festival seven days with joy of the festival. So everything has a purpose. It has a history, history to it. That's just not, God didn't just out of the blue tell you all these things. He didn't do it. God didn't just out of the blue tell you to observe this feast, this festival, or whatever. This is because your father Abram have done these things in his joy. He said, you're going to be like your father. You're going to serve it with joy. But then he, some people don't even realize that it's because Abram did all these things with joy. He did it. He, he did the feast of weeks, the feast of first fruits. He did it with joy because he's seen all that the Most High had done for him. The same with you. The feast of booth, all these things. He dwelt in booths. He did this of his own accord. Because why? He loved God. <laughs> when you love someone, there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing there. You, you can't, you will not do. When you love someone, there is nothing in this world you will not do for. And all he wanted was his seed to be blessed by that prayer in 12 and 20. Yes. Oh, bless the most high. We thank God for you, you, and you. We're still working on this line. I, I'm kind of confused on it. But anyway, one day it'll come to pass. But anyway, with all that, we're going to say peace.